friends, I'm Island Turtle. Welcome to Balmy Spirit. This is the monthly general tarot reading for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. There is a part two over on Patreon. You can also find it on Vimeo if you don't want to be a patron. For those who are signing up for Patreon, please read the tier descriptions thoroughly before you go ahead and sign up. We've had some people who just sign up and they don't really understand the kind of benefits that they're getting. So please be sure to read through those, okay? Um, keep in mind these are general and timeless. I do these about once every 30 days for each respective sign. So please take the messages as they resonate. Use your own discernment. If it is for you, you will have no doubts that it is for you. Now keep in mind this goes pertain to someone in your environment or people that you're dealing with or people in your energy field, especially from my cross watchers, this can be reversed or vice versa, okay? All right, Capricorns, let's dive in. I was getting some interesting references for you as I started to get into your energy. I heard steady, steady, steady. And I was like, what is this about? Um, and they literally brought this these references of Hulk and Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. And I was like, is there a whole other side of Capricorn that's coming out and people are getting nervous? Um, it's, a, it's interesting. I also was getting a little bit of Gemini vibes. It could also be that because we are, um, on the closing end of the post shadow for Mars retrograde in Gemini that you're really getting into the Mars Gemini energy within or your inner Gemini. I think we're all kind of feeling that as we are cementing these lessons that we've been learning for the last six months and we're being pushed off into this new cycle, this new precipice anyway. But yeah, it's like, it's got this vibe of, and please don't be offended by like anything that I'm like trying, of how I'm trying to communicate this. Cause I just need to be honest with what I'm getting right. Because there's, there's the, the, the doctor, <laughs> right? There's the version of Capricorn that most people see that it's like the, the representative, if you want to say. It could even just be the part of you that's just like your baseline. It could just be the baseline of Capricorn. It could be some sort of representative or the mask that you wear out amongst people. Or it could just be like the Capricorn part of you that does what you need to do and, you know, goes about doing your to-do list and anchor circumstances and make sure things are going right could be that part of you. So however you want to take that. And then there's the Mr. Hyde. There's this Hulk. <laughs> it's funny because they kept showing me green too. And I'm like, this is so strange. Um, green to me says heart space energy. To me, it also says like, physical health and vitality. I'm actually getting like humor. Um, yeah, it's almost like the part of you that is not so refined. Yeah, that's what it is, Capricorn. Interesting. There could be a Gemini bringing this out in you because I just keep getting this like compartmentaliz compartmentalizing of you and like your personality or these different versions of yourself. But yeah, there's the, there's the responsible, uh, refined, like, you know, the phrase, like, let your hair down, your hair ain't down in this version of yourself. Um, the Capricorn that's at work, the Capricorn that's doing their thing. Like, again, it could just be your baseline. But then there's this other version. There's this other part of you where it's the Capricorn unleashed. It's the part of you that wants to let your hair down, wants to be a little wild, wants to break the rules. You could even say this is your shadow. Some of you, that's the case. But I really feel like it's just like, it's a part of your wild side. Now, the fact they kept giving me, like, Hulk... And like Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, maybe this is a part of you that's a little upset. Maybe this is a part of you that people get nervous about or scared about. It could even be this part of you that's just very powerful in your power and people feel a little threatened because um, it has this like, as it's coming up and out, or if you step into that part of you, that version of you, it's almost like, okay, take it easy, take it easy, learn, learn, like temper it, temper it, temper it. So I'm very curious, very curious to dive deeper into this for you, Capricorn. Uh, yeah, very curious. Uh, I'm trying to feel what deck wants to work with you. Do I have a good deck for my Capricorns here? Hold on a second. Um, we're gonna go with Big Bertha, actually. We're gonna go with Big Bertha. For those of you guys who don't know, Big Bertha is a deck that I have combined. The Starseed Oracle and Angels and Ancestors deck, all the decks that I use are linked below. Okay. Any messages or insights for Capricorn? Summonizing Venus and Jupiter. Yeah, it's like, it's almost like your like inner 
Gemini, inner Aqua, inner Rebel. Um, just like, and again, it's very like wild and untamed. It's just very raw. It's very authentic. Um, where it's, yeah, it's a, it's a liberated part of you. But I keep getting this vibe like, this could also be the case, especially if it's like part of your shadow or part of you that you've kept repressed. Um, you know, maybe when you have stepped into this part of you or let this part of you out, um, you were shamed for it. You were shamed for it or maybe people just felt too threatened by it, right? Um, for some of you, there's some shame being worked out as this part of you gets more and more unleashed. Or you get more comfortable showing this part of you. But that's for some. Yeah, it's like you're you're unleashing your inner rebel. Because that's the thing with Capricorns, right? Like Capricorns, you know, they might not necessarily play by the rules, but they do like play by ethics and morals and, and a structure and a way of doing things, right? But it's almost like you're moving more into air, actually. Yeah, it's not even like water, maybe a little bit of fire, but yeah, it's like you're moving into this airy element of wild untamed going with the wind um speak in your mind <laughs> a lot of speak in your mind is coming up here too capricorn and maybe that is also what's threatening people it almost has like a king of swords knight of swords vibe interesting all right any other messages or insights from my capricorn summon raising venus and jupiter I taking these two? Yeah. That fox spirit, man, that's been so collective. We have the courageous peony, multifaceted, unique nature. Let yourself be seen. Not surprising why that's coming out, right? Because you are. Mr. Hyde wants to come out. Mr. Hyde wants to come out. They have spirit fox. Trust your talents in changing times. Yeah, honestly, Capricorn, I almost keep wanting to call you a different sign which is interesting. Yeah, it's like you're not presenting as a normal Capricorn. I think you're just learning to break out of that a little bit. Like let these other parts of you come out to play um, and just trust and trusting it and having fun in it too. Yeah, it's like you're turning into like a Aquarian Gemini. <laughs> it's like what you're turning into like before people's eyes. Um, yeah. The, one, the, the Spirit Fox, you know, in this deck, it speaks of adaptability which again, very Gemini, very much the lessons of Mars Gemini. And I do think you're doing that too. But Fox is also very intelligent. It's a very, uh, um, it's an energy that's uh, observant, very observant, very cautious, and will like make moves on the fly as they need to. It's kind of trickster energy. And you're moving into that. You're harnessing that. Kind of like this look on you Capricorns. Some people can't figure out what's going on with you. <laughs> it's coming through too. Some people are like, what is going on with the Capricorn? Oh no, oh no, is it Mr. Hyde? Is it Mr. Hyde? <laughs> it's kind of like that. Yeah, some people are really uneasy around you as you are like moving into this and showing this part of you, but I like it. I like this look on you. Thank you, like it too. Messenger, serious energy, bringing harmony into balance. Yeah, Capri it's funny, balance, right? The the twins. I just keep getting pulled back to Gemini, 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 Gemini. Just keep getting pulled back to that over and over and over. Um, but you need, yeah, it's like you need to embrace this part of you, this energy. You need to like move into it because it actually is giving you balance because it's like, so just going off the whole message of Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, right? Mr. Hyde's just the other part of Dr. Jekyll that he doesn't let the world see, that he's kind of afraid of or feels like he needs to suppress, right? It's still him. It's just the multifaceted him, right? It's the multidimensional versions of Dr. Jekyll. And that's what's going on here, Kathy. Some of you guys might be connecting to Sirius. And I keep, yeah, and now I'm getting pulled into like multidimensionality. Um, and I, I speak on this all the time, right? Where I've been trying to move away from the term higher self and move more into the different dimensional versions of you that are always existing as your one soul, as your one being through all all the, the variety of time and space, right? Including like 
other realities, right? Other timeline, timelines, right? Past lives, even if you want to include that in there, it's included in there, like with that terminology. But that's kind of what I'm getting at. <clears throat> the multi-dimensional versions of you are just coming out a little bit more. And it's actually giving you more balance. It's like it's you're moving into this place of wholeness. And even if it makes some people uncomfortable, it is what it is, right? But it's calling upon those different versions of you. So I mean, guys, this is tied into a mission. Sorry, just got to be honest with what I get. Some people get a little triggered by that word. I actually feel like I needed to say that because like some of you guys might be triggered by that word. Um, like an uncomfortability or a shame or a tension or a stress. Like feels like stress, like around the, the terms like mission, purpose that sort of deal. Um, but it's tied into this for you. It also has like a divine timing feel. Yeah, it's like you're meant to really like show people this side of you, introduce people to this side of you, embody this side of you, this dim this dimensional version of yourself uh, at this time. It's tying into where you're going and what it is you're gonna be doing. That's like, that's just how it's coming through. How your path is changing your path is changing and you got some surprise and st surprises in store for you capricorn any other messages or insights from my capricorns you're also showing off your intelligence i don't think it's intentional i think because you're moving into this airy element king of swords knight of swords you're also being more vocal uh more honest with what it is that you observe with what it is you observe because that's the thing too like i think sometimes people um underestimate how much capricorns know because capricorns tend to be quiet because you guys are the workhorses it's just it is what it is right it is what it is you're the workhorses you'll get it done and you don't need to explain to anybody how you're doing it right that's how capricorn functions why you're doing it that way why it's the best way best way or more efficient way you don't explain you don't explain things like that to people um but you're showing your intelligence. I think that's also kind of what is putting people back a little bit. They're like, oh shit, Capricorn actually knows more. Like, you know what I mean? Called soul gifts and training, it's time to step up. Yeah, Capricorn, um, you're moving into this energy. You're being introduced to this version of yourself and introducing other, people's to, other people to this version of yourself because there is a big change on your path coming and it requires this of you. It's almost like it's, um, I don't want to say, like if you were to like start studying a book, this is like the introduction, literally, before chapter one. Like this is what has to happen to set you on this path or to like, it's almost like that's the green light or it's like the indication that you're ready when you're ready to actually introduce yourself to yourself, this version of you, to Mr. Hyde. Uh, Hulk, if you will. I keep showing me green. It's so funny. And when you're ready to introduce that version to other people. Overall, we do have Hunter. This has also been coming out a lot for the collective. Track down your fears and your desires. I keep feeling this tension around mission and purpose and path even. I feel a tension there. I feel a little bit of resistance there, maybe a little bit of avoidance and a little bit of shame. I think there's something that needs to be worked out there for you or faced anyway, or, or just just looked at, just like have an honest moment with yourself about why that tension's there, why that stress is there. Are you putting a lot of expectations on it? Do you feel like you failed in some way? I don't think, I think if you think you failed, I don't think you actually did. I don't think you actually did. There's just like this really not great feeling about it, but I think that just needs to be like looked at. Um, and then this, the other part of this card is desires. It's interesting that all this like polarity, right? With like Gemini energy, balance, fear versus desire. And I've said this before, when you really look at the things that you are really afraid of, the things that cause you the most anxiety, we usually have levels of anxiety and fear like that because it's getting in the way of what we want, or it's somehow related or correlated to what we want. Because if we really didn't care, we wouldn't be stressed about it, <laughs> right? Um, You've been feeling this call for a while, and for some of you, I almost feel like you haven't been able to make sense of it. I think because there's been this tension and like this tension and pressure and stress, and it, again, I keep getting pulled to shame. Maybe in a little bit of imposter syndrome. 
Like, who am I to go do that? Who am I to lead that? Who am I to create that? Who am I to speak on that? Who am I, to, who am I, who am I to do any of that? Is kind of how it feels. Yeah, it definitely feels like imposter syndrome. Some of you feel like whatever you've been called to is almost bigger than you. But if you move into this like aqua Gemini airy energy, I don't think I don't I don't think it's bigger than you. I don't think it'd be shown to you. I don't think your soul would want to be doing it or wanting to go towards whatever this is if it was too big for you. A little bit of shadow work going on there to, to deal with that. Okay. Underneath that, yeah, we have autumn. Release the old. Release the old and rest. Um, so you guys might need a little bit of a respite, a little bit of a four swords hermit mode before you move, move, <laughs> get to move in on these changes. I feel like the changes are just happening naturally. Like it just feels like a natural alignment, right? Like as you naturally embrace this like Aqua Gemini, Mr. Hyde Hulk version of you and you get comfortable showing that to the to people around you, showing that to the world essentially these changes to your to your vision, to your path, your purpose, your mission are just going to show itself. If you're okay, if you start to like, oh, and at the same time, also doing this work to release any like tension, anxiety, shame, stress that is prohibiting you from really embracing all of this, right? Yeah, interesting. All right, where are we at? 16 minutes? All right, I'm gonna pull some more cards and we're gonna go ahead and get into part two. I just want to pull the animals because they're the best deck ever. <laughs> the wild unknown animal spirit deck. Okay. Mm. Any messages or insights from my Capricorns? I wouldn't be surprised if the elk comes out for you, actually. I feel like you guys have been in elk energy or embodying elk energy. I wouldn't be surprised if the fox comes out. Who else might come out for you? The wolf might come out for you. It's funny because like those are all very like earthy. Oh shit, my <laughs> sorry, my my phone is dying. Give me a second. There we go. Glad I saw that. Um Yeah, I'm like, what about air? Maybe dragonfly. Maybe dragonfly. Anyway, I'm gonna stop intuitively guessing. Any messages or insights from my Capricorns? That's too many. Any other messages or insights from my Capricorns pertaining to this spread? There's a nice strength that I'm feeling with you too. Again, I keep getting Aqua Gemini, Aqua Gemini, Aqua Gemini. Uh, yeah, it's like people can, can also see this like rebel coming out. I think you've always had this in you. I just think, you know, societal programming probably kept kept that suppressed for you. Um, but it also just wasn't time. There's, yeah, I keep getting this divine timing component involved in this too. My hummingbird might come out. Any other messages or insights from my Capricorns? Any other messages or insights from my Capricorns? Peacock. Well, that is an air energy. Interesting. It kind of speaks a little bit to the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, because sometimes when Peacock comes out, it's like a superficial energy. It also speaks of image, like being captivated um, by something or people being captivated by the Peacock. And again, I keep getting that, um, like the doc, doc, the doctor, the Dr. Capricorn, <laughs> the Dr. Jekyll is like your baseline or like what you've been showing to the world. And then this like Mr. Hyde wants to come out, right? But the Mr. Hyde that wants to come out is very captivating, very powerful, palpable. The energy is palpable. And that's what I'm saying. Like people might be reacting very strongly to you at this time, but that's okay. That's kind of the point. <laughs> it's kind of how it's coming through too. It's kind of the point that they react this strongly to you as well. Hmm. Any other messages or insights from my Capricorns? Something is triggering this though. 
like like I said, something's really triggering that moving into Gemini Aqua, um, uh, like really peeling back the layers of like fear, anxiety, shame around how you feel around the terms, mission, purpose, path, vision. Something's triggering it, like a domino effect. It's a tower moment for sure. Just wonder what it is. Any other messages or insights from my Capricorns? Summonizing Venus and Jupiter pertaining to this spread. Mm. Getting a little lower chakra energy now. Yellow, orange, yellow, orange, yellow, orange, solar sacral. Solar sacral. Yeah, it's a very empowered feeling. It's like a fire's lighting. Like I said, and I was feeling a little bit of fire with you too, but I definitely feel like I'm moving into like strong air, but it's being fueled by fire. Ooh. <laughs> it's being fueled by fire. Let's see. Nice, we got the swan. A uh, swan can speak of partnership, but it also speaks of the, the multidimensional versions of ourselves. That's how I look at swan energy. Because it's not just what the world sees. It's everything happening underneath the surface. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And it's funny, right? Because that's like literally what they speak of. The more of like the mask what people see image and then everything happening below the surface uh, and merging the two, right? Integrating the two. But really like, really more relying on Mr. Hyde. You know, it's interesting. I would also check your one sevens. Cancer, if I remember, had something similar because I had a friend or a couple friends actually remind me um, that I that they were like the three wolves and it was like kind of like this compartmentalizing as well. So I'd definitely watch the cancer reading, especially if you have any placements in either. But um, it is the one seven, which means you're always connected to cancer no matter what. You're always connected to cancer because that axis for you is very is very much activated and lit. Um, and to me, the seventh house is the mirror house. It's this like other, like a complimentary part of us, right? <sighs> Cheetah, fire! <laughs> fire is lit, fire is lit. This is a lot of movement actually. This is movement, 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 movement movement um sorry so many things coming through here so capricorn i keep almost said cancer interesting capricorn's part of this too of uh, moving into like getting the fire activated moving into the air letting mr hyde come out um i also feel some reflecting that's part of this like triggering this process uh you might have been processing uh relationships actually because i keep getting this mirror affect the complement to Capricorn, right? The other side of Capricorn, like who you've been, right? There is a complement to that, right? If like on a, on a spectrum of like zero to a hundred, if you're like, this is like really crude. So I'm just trying to, excuse me, think of an example. Jeez, excuse me. Maybe you've been 80% logical. Maybe you've been 80 logical out of a hundred. What would the, the flip side of that be? 20 logical, right? If you've been 80 logical on a zero to a hundred, and you've been, I don't know, on a scale from zero to 100, you've been like 10 playful, right? It's like now you're moving into like 90 playful, 20 logical, right? And again, not like, you know, you understand what I'm saying. You understand what I'm saying, the compliment, right? And so relationships, they're great mirrors. They really are. They're really, really great mirrors and they can see where we're not filling out the rest of the spectrum, what that looks like, what that feels like. And I, I, I can feel that really strongly that like reflecting on relationships has actually been showing you who Mr. Hyde is for you to your Dr. Jekyll. I got those right. And that could even translate to relationships, right? Like who actually would be a good match for Capricorn? Who actually would be the right business partner, life partner, best friend, whatever, um to you right but it's also being that for yourself and bringing that out um wow <laughs> this is especially true for my cancer risings and my capricorn risings just because literally that falls in this your your compliment falls in the seventh house like capricorn rising your cancer is seventh cancer rising your capricorn is seventh so especially for my cancer cap risings um this holds really true okay but this cheetah, 
cheetah cheetah uh I don't know why I'm hearing the Fanta song. Sorry. <laughs> anyway. Um, you'll know when it's time to take action. Some of you guys might be traveling. Um, getting strong eight of wands off of this. You'll just know. You'll know. And again, it's part of that moving, letting the fire fuel the air element for you. Fuel the inner king of swords, inner... Um, I just realized, duh, King of Swords is Aqua and Knight of Swords is Gemini. Literally, I just realized that. Wow. Wow. Anyway, yeah, there's something with Gemini Aqua. I would even like look at the Gemini and Aquarian reads too, because it's like they clearly are linked to you astrologically, internally, energetically, whatever, what have you. But um, yeah, when you move into the King of Swords, Knight of Swords, you move into the Gemini Aqua within, right? And you start to show, Mr. you start to understand the Mr. Hyde to your Dr. Jekyll. And you you show that to the world. You like embrace that fully. Door's going to be open. And a lot of changes. You might have already been experiencing changes that are like helping to align um, whatever, you know, whatever path you're about to walk or whatever door's about to open for you. But there's something about that transition to King of Swords, Knight of Swords, where it's going to go fast and you're going to take off. If this is, oh, interesting. Turtle, grounded energy, very grounded energy. I feel like this is part of the um, energy that is coming out to emphasize, to take your time with understanding your Mr. Hyde, understanding your Hulk um, and, and getting to know that part of you and stepping into that part of you and introducing that part of you to the world. There's like a, a pacing with that turtle energy. This also, when this card comes out, it's also about ancestors as well. Ancestors are here. Um, there's definitely some moving past some ancestral patterning and generational curses. That's also, I'm hearing karmic clearing. Yeah, you've been going through a karmic clearing when it comes to your ancestry. Um, anyway, I wanted to come back to this other message that was coming through. Relationships. If this is like, if this is involving a romantic relationship, get, get ready. Um, Get ready for some serious activation within that romantic relationship. It could even be that someone shows up and it's like, oh shit, I've been waiting for you. Um, this could even be in business, it doesn't have to just be romantic, but I'm getting strong for those of you dealing with romantic um, energies, situations, definitely can hold true here. Any other messages or insights for my Capricorns? release the frog emotional releasing and cleansing i knew it and like i said i was feeling that tension shame around fear it's been keeping you from seeing mr hyde overall dolphin oh that's beautiful dolphin is fun playful it's also gemini for me even though it's a water energy here it's also the healer card it can be a mystic um but playful sensual sexual um in and out of uh dark and light like it kind of like ebb and flow kind of like the swan Do balancing dr jekyll mr hyde but this is fun i love this this is this is saying that there's a lot of fun to be had with the it almost feels like you're moving through a portal we're all moving through a portal technically speaking um and this my energy might really show up like more towards the end of march um it's fun it's very fun it's very playful especially anybody dealing with romantic stuff dating stuff get ready to have some fun yeah coming out with the bear behind that and like i said i was also feeling a strength with you bear provides that strength as well but this indicates that you are coming out of a period of being a little bit in like recovery taking time um processing fear processing shadow again getting acquainted with mr hyde nice all right let's go ahead into part two and if for those of you guys who are leaving us here Thank you for joining. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share all that stuff. And don't forget to check out the website and social media as well. And I will see you guys very soon. Okay, take care.